Recently, while browsing on Amazon, I was pretty shocked to learn that an old 2017 MacBook Air was the number 17 top seller on Amazon for every laptop, like out of every laptop on the market, a 2017 MacBook Air was number 17 on the charts. And it just made me really think, why is everyone buying this laptop? And I had to check it out for myself. So in this box is that 2017 uh, MacBook Air from Amazon. And I wanna open it up, take a look at it and see, is there any way a 2017 MacBook Air is still worth it in 2023. So let's get to it. Now, you know, I'm a pro here. Got the professional uh, box opening tools. And, and you know, when you come to a Greg's Gadgets video, you get precision. 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 You get skill. skill. You get finesse. There it is. <laughs> so you're not getting like a nice Apple box. You're getting the most utilitarian uh, unboxing experience you have ever seen from an Apple product. And, oh, look at that. It just kind of flops out like this. Uh, Amazon Renewed, you can see I wasn't lying. It's, it's a renewed product from Amazon. Uh, it does come with the charging brick and the cable, so that's good. Uh, what, are, what are we using? Like a MagSafe cable, right? This is a 2017 MacBook Air. You know, kind of using futuristic technology. The MacBook Air in 2022 just got its MagSafe cable back. It is here with us once again. So you got this nice little, oh, this is not official Apple. Look at this thing. This is kind of a little scary. That is not an official MagSafe uh, charging brick. It's all attached into one unit. So cheap. Ooh, this thing feels so cheap. I'm actually kind of, I'm a little scared to use this to be honest with you, you know? You don't want to mess with uh, bad power supplies. But let's take a look at the laptop itself. Hopefully it has a charge because I don't want to pl plug it in and charge. This thing is dusty. This whole box is dusty. We got to get it off the desk because it is going to make me cough in a second. So here it is, a 2017 MacBook Air. I believe it has a 1.8 gigahertz processor it's supposed to have 128 gigabytes of storage 120 gig i said that like it was a lot 128 gigabytes of storage very spartan here and i believe like four or eight gigabytes of memory i guess we'll check that up when we boot it up but yeah um condition of the laptop at first glance looks pretty good this this looks pretty close to new on the bottom you do got like a few like micro abrasions or you know the fancy term would be scratches you got some scratches here right uh but on the top of the laptop and everything it seems to be pretty free of wear you can you know for the bottom you're not really looking at that that's fine let's open this thing up though so i paid like 329 dollars total for this laptop which for a mac is pretty cheap right like you're not going to the apple store today and walking away with a laptop for anywhere near 300 dollars. you're at least spending around $800 to get a laptop. So this is pretty cheap. Okay, th that's the background for what? This is Catalina. When was Catalina? The, the, these icons are looking pretty old, actually. I don't think this is this is as recent as I remember. Let's go to the uh, About This Mac. Let's see, okay, yeah, Mac OS Catalina. The built-in display, 13.3 inch display, 1440 by 900 resolution. Again, it is not a retina display. If you look for the pixels, you can definitely see them. You don't have to move that close to the display to start seeing the individual pixels. If you're sitting back like this, it's a little hard, but the minute you're up like this, you know, really cramming in, really working, you can see the pixels. All right, let me update everything. I wanna get on a current version of Mac OS or the whatever latest version's available, and then I'll come back and uh, I'll probably use it for a little bit. But we'll talk more about this laptop. Let's see, is this actually worth the money in uh, 2023? All right, I am back. Uh, new shirt, obviously some time has passed uh, since I uh, started setting this up, recording this on a new day, spent some time using the 2017 MacBook Air to find out if it's actually worth it in 2023 and why is everyone buying this laptop? So I've learned a, a lot. And I gotta say, I'm gonna show my appreciation for this MacBook Air first. Number one, the design, this is a 2013 design, right? Like it's been updated all the way up till 2017 with you know new processors and stuff like that. But this is a 2013 design. It has still held up really well in 
2023. Basically, 10 years later, this design looks great. Um, there are some noticeable downgrades, right? Like you get like these really thick bezels on the MacBook Air, which do kind of look funny compared to like how like thin and modern the bezels are on the you know current MacBook Airs. But the body still feels premium. It's a it's an aluminum design. It, the Apple logo on the back is glowing. They don't have that on modern MacBooks uh, anymore. I love that glowing Apple logo. I wish Apple would still incorporate that design. I, I know the display lid is too thin on the modern MacBooks to get the glowing Apple logo. I know that, but I would still like to see them uh, incorporate that design again. I'm sure they can find a way to do it. And other things like the keyboard is still good, right? Like this isn't the 2018 era of MacBook Airs where they use like the butterfly keyboard. Like keyboard has a lot of travel on it. Feels great to type on. Trackpad's still very smooth and responsive. Uh, the one thing that did throw me off though was the biometrics, no touch ID. So just the power button here. You have to type in your password on everything. Kind of annoying, especially being used to using biometrics for so long on MacBooks, iPhones, iPads, everything. Not having that, it's, it's a real downer, let me tell you in 2023. But everything about this design, maybe besides the bezels, still holds up pretty well. Now there are things that don't hold up so well in 2023. I think the, the biggest thing that doesn't really hold up in this MacBook Air is the display. It's, it's the first thing that when you open up this machine, it's the first thing you notice is how low quality the display is in modern terms. So there's a lot wrong with it too, right? It's a TN panel, which means if you start moving this MacBook, the viewing angles get really bad really quickly. You kind of want to be staring directly at it. Otherwise, it's going to look really washed out. And in general, this screen looks really washed out compared to a modern uh, IPS LCD panel. Uh, it doesn't have like the P3 wide color gamut or anything like that. It's like using like some sort of like sRGB kind of thing. Uh, the resolution on this is not a retina display at all. It's like 1440 by 900. And let me tell you, you can see the pixels on this. You, you start looking like not even that far. You see the pixels. Uh, I was looking at like the YouTube homepage and like just looking at like the preview of thumbnails, everything looks really low quality. Uh, no 4K video on this. You know what I mean? Like you're, you're, it's, it's a low quality display panel. It's one of the hardest things to go back to uh, on this machine. Um, but th there were some pleasant surprises. The speakers weren't as bad as I thought they would be. Uh, they did sound kind of tinny and hollow at higher volumes. But what I will say is that I've heard worse from modern kind of like laptops or Chromebooks in the speaker department. So the fact that this thing still sounded decent in 2023, I think is a testament to Apple speaker quality over the years. So still sounds good, but not as good as modern MacBook, uh, a modern MacBook Air. Definitely nowhere near something like a 14 inch MacBook Pro, but passable in 2023, which I think is good. Another thing that was totally passable is the webcam. The webcam on this actually didn't look all too bad at all. I think like the 2018 era of MacBook Airs when they had like the 720p webcam uh, without like any of the processing and stuff may actually have looked worse than what is being offered on this older uh, 2017 MacBook Air. So one thing that was really interesting and you can take a look at this next to like the M2 MacBook Air was the port selection. What a port selection we have on this machine. Uh, you get the MagSafe charger, which they finally brought back to the M2 MacBook Air. If you're getting the M1 MacBook Air, you're not getting the MagSafe charger. But you get the MagSafe, you got a USB-A, haven't seen that on a MacBook in a while. And then you get your headphone jack, right? And But then on the other end, you got a Thunderbolt 2 port, which maybe you're not using nowadays. I mean, like, no one's really using this connector. I, I guess you could, like, get, like, an adapter for it. You got another USB-A port, so if you have a lot of USB-A accessories, you got two of those USB-A ports. There's none of those in the MacBook Air. And then the SD card slot. I can import photos, I can import videos into this if I wanted to, which maybe I wouldn't do on a MacBook Air, but yeah, I'm not like I'm editing them, right? But if you're for viewing and stuff like that, you could put an SD card in here. You can even like expand the storage maybe technically doing that. It is only 128 gigabyte drive, which is kind of sparse. Uh, so that is an option on this machine. And if you're looking at the M2 MacBook Air, it's kind of a regression in some ways. Now the USB-C ports are obviously more versatile. They're Thunderbolt ports. So you can connect a lot more to it, have way more bandwidth, way faster. But in terms of like the overall port selection, there's technically more options on this older 2017 MacBook Air. Another weakness on this machine is obviously the speed, right? So even simple things like you're opening up Safari, uh, you know, that can take a couple bounces in the dock. And then even when you're in Safari, um, it's not as smooth and responsive as it would be on a modern Mac. You're scrolling, uh, you're zooming into things with the trackpad. You can see that the content has to take some time to load. 
Uh, and opening apps in general is just a slower experience, and you're not really going to be using this for any sort of heavy duty tasks. Like you should not buy this $300 laptop to use as a video editing machine for Final Cut Pro. Could you edit video in it? Sure, but things are gonna be slow, things are gonna be laggy uh, and unresponsive. So it is a slow laptop for 2023 standards, but again, it, it has an SSD in it. It is not like painfully slow to use for basic tasks, but comparing it against something like a modern M1 or an M2 machine, yeah, you're definitely going to see that it's it's not the speediest laptop out there. The thing I was really interested to see when I got this machine was also the battery life. Uh, again, this is a refurbished machine. If you're getting this for $300, it's an older 2017 model. They're not making them new, right? These are all gonna be like refurbished units. Uh, I didn't know what to expect with the battery life, if, if the battery capacity is gonna be like super drained or anything like that. To my surprise, the, the capacity on this was pretty good. It was at 90% health, which I'm pretty happy with, at 90% capacity. But in terms of like modern terms of like a laptop, like I guess if you're doing like basic stuff, and like I just said before, you're probably only going to be doing basic things on this laptop. I, I you know, from using it, and I was setting it up, so maybe it was a little bit more battery intensive. intensive. I would say like maybe like, three to four hours, if I'm being generous, three to four hours, maybe like three hours, right? Uh, on this machine without charging it. And I guess maybe that's like all you could expect for like the capacity it has. But in terms of like modern, like M2 or M1 machines, the battery life on those is just so insane. Going back to these, this older Intel Mac, uh, it is surprising to me how quick this battery uh, is starting to drain. But if you're on an older Mac or something like that, maybe maybe that isn't as important to you. Okay, after all is said and done, why is everyone buying this MacBook Air, right? That was the question I came in with. I saw it at number 17 on the, on the sales charts for Amazon. People are still buying this thing in droves. Why are they buying it? And I think I see the appeal. It is a $300 laptop. It works in the Apple ecosystem. There's still some good things going about it. The design for this thing still feels a little bit premium, even though the bezels are big, right? The, the overall design of it still feels pretty premium. Uh, I feel like this thing, even though it's like refurbished and stuff, it still feels like it's gonna last a while. So because it plays nice in the Apple ecosystem, because it's really the only MacBook you could get in this price range at $300, like the best you're gonna do with like a modern like M1 machine is probably around like $800, maybe like $600. $700, $600 used if you're lucky, right? So you're basically at the best you know, point of that laptop. You're basically looking at double the price of this machine. And if you have a very limited budget and you're just doing basic tasks, you just wanna type some stuff out, you just wanna go on Facebook or Twitter, whatever, you know, social media, listen to music, watch video, whatever. Maybe this is a good option, right? And I, and I, I came into this expecting there was no way I was gonna recommend this machine, but here is the point where I do have to kind of caution you if you are thinking about buying this machine. The software support is what concerns me the most. Now, yes, sitting here in 2023, right, being on one previous software version isn't a huge deal. Mac OS Monterey still runs great, um, still supports a lot of connectivity between like iPhone and everything. It's not like the biggest deal in the world in terms of like the Apple ecosystem play. But as this thing starts to age, right? We're like, we're about to go into WWDC, about to get more software upgrades. The next software upgrade, the next software upgrade after that, this thing starts to get old. It starts to lose off on features and Apple might, you know, publish security fixes and bugs and like really, you know, life-threatening situations like that. But in terms of like working perfectly in Apple ecosystem world or, just being like a you know machine that you can rely on to load like modern stuff, that is the area where I'm kind of like, maybe don't get this machine. Maybe get something that can support the latest Mac OS version. You know, maybe the M1 MacBook Air is out of your budget and I get that, but I'm just saying in the long term, if you can afford it, that is a machine that is going to age a lot better over for the software updates than this old uh, 2013 machine. So that is my main sticking point with this. It's not even the hardware. It's it's not like the design, the keyboard, anything like that. It is the software being out of date and not getting any more updates on top of that. Uh, but yeah, if you wanna buy this MacBook Air, I could think of worse ways to spend $300, right? Like it's it surprised me in how good this design has held up. I think that's a testament to Apple Macs in general, how well they age and how 
they're very hard to kind of kill. So if you want this MacBook Air, I'll leave an affiliate link in the description below. Um, I, I can see why some people are buying it for sure. It's it's definitely an appealing machine at $300 in, in a way, right? Like, I kind of get it. I wouldn't buy it, but I kind of get it. Uh, if you like this video, you can give me a like. If you want to see more from the channel, you can subscribe. And uh, you made it this far into the video, you know, why not subscribe? We're close to 300,000. You know, give me your subscription. Get me over the edge to 300,000. What, what are you gonna do after this? You're gonna, what are you gonna watch? Like a, like a Luke Miani video? You're watching like old MacBook content. You're probably gonna watch that guy repair a MacBook. I'm not repairing a MacBook. That is beyond my skill set. You know, this thing, however it comes, that's, that's how I'm keeping it. If the screen breaks, I, I'm gonna throw it out. I'm not repairing it. 